welcome to Radio Labyrinth season seven, episode three. Oh man, what a what a what a week of television! What a week! Everything that we love and hate is on TV right now. We're going to talk about it a little bit tonight. We also have a guest that's going to pop in in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to catch up with Josh Warren, friend of ours with um, Action Show Studios. He's also a local actor. Uh, what's the last thing we saw him in? I believe it was season one of uh, The Righteous Gemstones. Yeah, he should be one of those muscle boys. <laughs> really, do you think he could pull it off? Yeah. He's not a muscle boy, though. So he could he still be the, it off. He could be the, the one guy that they're training to be a muscle boy. <laughs> I don't understand what that is all about. Um, I mean, I kind of do, but I don't want to say because I don't want to get <laughs> speculating on something because I'm not going to you know, think negatively about it. But it's weird. It's really weird. But that show is weird. So who cares? It's, it's a great show. But Josh Warren will be coming on. He uh, and his company did a music video uh, by... Uh, for the band Nashville Pussy, you guys remember Nashville Pussy? Uh huh. Oh, yeah. They, uh, my favorite song of theirs is "Blowjob from a Rattlesnake," <laughs> which is an old song. My mom used to date this guy back in the '90s before she passed away. His name was Bob, and he was into all sorts of weird music for his age. He was 50 at the time, I guess, or 51 or whatever. But he got me into them, and he also liked Motorhead, and and he was a big Van Morrison fan. But uh, they have they have a song. I forget the name of it. I'm looking it up right now uh, in Peacemaker. And they made a music video for it. So uh, it's Come On, Come On is the name of the song. So we'll talk to him about that and also catch up with him and see what's going on. Uh, let's see. I want to thank uh, Dustin's brother, who you guys will hear this in a couple of uh, days when it drops. Uh, Radio Labyrinth presents Dustin's brother, uh, Browen. Browen. Why can't I say it? I say Browen. I can't say names. I can't even say, I don't even know. Is that a German name or an Irish name? It's from the Bible. I don't know. My mom was real big on naming the other kids in the family with with uh, religious names. I was just named after Dustin Hoffman, so after the graduate. <laughs> Go he's, he's Dustin's bro, so he's Browen. You were yeah. named after Dustin, Dustin Hoffman. Well, <clears throat> we did speak to him, and that episode will be coming out now. The reason we spoke to him isn't just because he's Dustin's brother. It's because he's a lead guitarist for a band uh, known as St. Paul and the Broken Bones, and he has lots of great stories to share with us uh, about uh, opening for the Rolling Stones, meeting some of the Rolling Stones, if not all of them, and, of course, hanging out with Elton John. And he's an artist and all-around um, uh, interesting cat. So thank you, Dustin, for inviting your brother onto the show. Yeah, no problem. I've been trying to get him on since I started, you know, for like the last year we've been trying to get him, but all, all uh, of our brothers have now been on the show. Your brother was on. Yeah, that's true. My brother was on for my birthday episode. Yeah, that's right. All well, right. I guess we need to get more siblings. Dustin, do you have any more siblings or just the two of you? No, I've She's got, got a sister somewhere. Yeah, I got a, I got a sister. Mm -hmm. Is she going to uh, come on? What, is she in a band? <laughs> no, she's not in no. a band. She's a business owner and a good one. Okay. What so, kind of business? Uh, disaster restoration was the, uh, you know, fire, water damage, cleanup. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, I can extract some cool stories out of that. That's how I got my copy of an R. Kelly tape <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> she found an R. Kelly tape? Yeah, we found, we, we used to do, um, we did water damages and, and one of them, you know, you go out at three o'clock in the morning because somebody's water heater breaks and, and we went up to, uh, you sure it was water? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a double check. Was it? <laughs> but hey, we went to I Roswell. There's a football player up there. Um, and I can't remember his name right now, but he, um, he had a basement that was flooded and we were moving stuff out. And all of a sudden one of the guys comes up and he was like, Hey, this videotape fell out and it says R Kelly on the front of it. And I was like, no. And we have to take everything back to the shop and clean it and bring it back. So I had to make sure the tape was functional. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, what was on it? Uh, drip, drip, drip. <laughs> it begins with a letter P. Oh, yeah. that, that tape. Okay. I hope yeah. you got rid and, of it. And it, it ends all over their face. Yes. Um, oh, yes, I did. I didn't girl. make copies of it and, and bootleg them online or anything like that. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. So you didn't find the infamous tape, the, just a tape of R. Kelly pissing on somebody's face. I don't know if it was the original one or not, but I mean, it was, that's exactly what it was. That's sad. That's sad that you got to do that. And it looked like it'd been, you know, it was one of those that had been copied 15 times. You could see all the track lines 
you know, you could barely make out what it was, but knowing the history, you know, and this was 12 years ago. You can I take mean, it. Was, yeah. You just, you know, close your eyes and pour stick out your tongue. Yeah. <laughs> given, uh, given a little yellow discipline to use Jim Norton's words. Uh, so Josh will be joining us, uh, I believe, in about uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, so we'll talk to him, but before we get to talking, unless we want to keep talking about urine, um, stuff like that, I don't think the audience wants us to, so we'll stop. <laughs> urine is, um, a way you can treat, uh, illness. I've, I've been yeah. reading a lot yeah. about it. The jellyfish people, stings. Jellyfish stings, yes, but I've been reading that people are taking, uh, or drinking their own urine to, to ward off things that we're not allowed to mention in relation to therapeutics. But I do it anyway because it's sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> I mean, the taste goes without standing. I mean, not with, you know, the, the, the taste is good. The taste is, is it's unique. Um, it's, if you like liver, I don't know. It's very metallic tasting. Hey, uh, how does he know? Utilitarian. How do I know? Everybody knows what he tastes like. No, right? they don't. Oh, come on. Sick fuck. <laughs> but there are people, there are dumb people that are using it to treat certain diseases and, and ailments and things. So we're not going to say which one, um, but it's not lupus. If you mix horse dewormer in with it, then it's, it's like a nice tea or coffee. It is horse dewormer in urine, not horse urine. Cause you know, I mean, don't be gross, but ivermectin in your own whiz uh, mixed together in a concoction. Now, if you heat that up and you add a little of the hydroxychloroquine to it, sweeter than you. You have a sweet cocktail that does nothing but kill worms and maybe <laughs> kill other worms. But I mean, if if you kill worms, wouldn't they be cool? To, no, I don't care. We're gonna get gross. Let's talk about TV, <laughs> TV and uh, and or movies. I was excited today. I, I I got one of my tweets got liked by Mario Cantone. <laughs> All um, right. So uh, that made me happy because Sally Struthers was on. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast two episodes with her because they talked to her for so long and uh, she does great impersonations who knew right and she's knocking them out of the park and she did one of somebody that um, uh, she did one of Catherine Hepburn who um, she met when she used to visit Ruth Gordon now if you got to go Google them go ahead and come back but uh, <laughs> Ruth Gordon is in a bunch of movies probably Harold and Maude Harold and Maude for the uh, cinephile out there, but uh, any which way but loose. She's uh, Clint Eastwood's mother. You goddamn baboon. Goddamn baboon. No respect. No pride. Um, I loved her in that. And she's also in uh, one of my favorite movies uh, by uh, uh, the, the poor Polish director who can't come back to the United States because he was railroaded. Um, Roman Polanski. Polanski. Give him a break. His wife was killed. Yeah. So five years later, he had sex in a hot tub with an underage girl. I get it. You get upset about things. And that's what happens. But anyway, and that's why he can't come back to the United States, not because of, you know, bad movies. But he made uh, he made a, a really good film with Mia Farrow and uh, Charles Grodin is in it briefly. Uh, of course, it's called Rosemary's Baby. You guys ever see that movie? Love that movie. Good film. Oh Scary. Satan, Satan stuff's the stuff that scared me more than like, uh, you know, you know, like demonic shit always scared me more than like the knife wielding guy and everything. So anyway, before we get to talking about, I don't even know what, why I went down there. What were we talking about? Sally oh, anyway, Struthers. she does. Yeah. Sally Struthers does great impersonations. So, uh, anyway, I said, yeah, they all sounded pretty good. And then he liked the tweet and aren't you glad I told that story? <laughs> I felt like sometimes I feel like I'm turning into my dad telling the story. And uh, that, which is fine, because eventually he gets to the end of the story, but it takes a while to get there. Mario Cantone is hilarious on the Christmas episode of Gilbert. Every year he's so funny. My God, is he funny. And it's non-PC, and it's very rare to hear that kind of humor these days. Same with Sally Struthers, who does a very problematic um, Asian affectation on her voice when she's talking about her Japanese hairdresser. Google, Google Raging Bullwinkle if you want to see Mario Cantone in action. Raging Bullwinkle. What is that from? It was from some comedy show, I think on HBO or something. But it Bad was, TV, wasn't it? No, because it was, it had language in it and stuff, so it had to be on HBO or one of the one of the pay channels. I remember, it like you suck, Mister Peabody's cock. I remember that hardcore, hardcore TV. TV, hardcore yeah. TV. Yeah, that's that's Mario Cantone. Yeah, 
I didn't know that. Yeah, I love that. I got it brought up. I'm going to watch it as soon as we're done. I remember that. All right, before Josh comes on to talk about um, uh, Peacemaker, which is really my favorite show that's airing right now, a new show for sure. Uh, let's talk about the book of Boba Fett. Are we all caught up on the book of Boba Fett? Everybody yep. watched today's yep. episode that dropped. All right. I've been on the fence about book of Boba Fett because I don't think it lives up to the Mandalorian, which you know preceded it on Disney plus, but it's the same showrunners. It's the same people that did the Mandalorian. I'm just not getting it. And this episode didn't help me uh, want to continue watching it. Now, Jeff, you love it. And I'm not going to argue with you about it, but what is it about it that you like? Everything. It's the, it's John Favreau playing with star Wars figures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robert, Robert Rodriguez in there doing right. shit now dustin you said you were going to give it one more chance what do you what did you think of the most recent episode episode four i, li I like the episode um it it it's kind of going back to the you know the big story i guess the main story is is the the gangster story mm -hmm. um you know taking everything over that was cool him at, like last episode we were you know it was kind of sudden that they got rid of all the tuscans but this episode he kind of got his revenge um yeah but it was, was the bikers brief. it was very brief um, yeah but it was cool to see slave a, one it was a flashback yeah i know he's in the back back, back to tank yeah, and, yeah. you know they're giving you the backstory i I like that but the thing that bothered me is uh so he and fennec go to the sarla they go to they show you the, the spoiler alert by the way but they go to jabba's palace because uh, boba fett wants to get slave one out of the uh, hangar there or whatever and get his, his ship back. So they go there, they find out how many people are in there. They go in, shoot everybody and they get the ship and leave. So he wants to go to the Sarlacc pit to find his armor. Now, why would I find fault with him wanting to go to the Sarlacc pit and find his armor? Mm, I don't know. That was the last place he consciously knew where it was. But the Jawas took it. He didn't know that the Jawas took it. He, he was unconscious. If, 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 if Boba Fett was conscious, there's no mm -hmm. way the Jabba's would have taken his his armor in the first place i thought that, he woke up while the jawas were taking shit from him i mean i think he was i think he was exhausted from climbing out of the sand and then he he just he doesn't know i don't think he, plus between that and then immediately getting picked up by the tuscans and drug across the desert i think his memory's probably jogged or you know a memory's right. probably messed up from from losing the armor and he doesn't he doesn't really know that the jaw was had or we you know we know that he doesn't and that was another thing about this episode they're they're they've now in this episode we've crossed into the mandalorian okay yeah because you know she she was chasing she was chasing the mandalorian you know she gets shot you know those those explosions he was seeing in the air and then finding her mm -hmm. um that was you know that was from season one um of the mandalorian and you know, so now that we're it's it's coming to a head. I mean, the, I, I got a feeling, especially from you know, of course, from the soundtrack of the last two minutes of or the of the this episode. You know, Mandalorian's coming. You know, there's right. either him or you know, man, uh, other Mandalorians, uh, because you know, like she said, if you've got money, we can we can hire an army. Yeah. All so. right. So one last one last thing I have, and I think this is nitpicking, of course. She'd never been on that ship. Fennec had never been on Slave One, but she knows what button to push. Maybe it's the same on all ships. But well, he told he told her what kind of ship it was, and sh so she knew of the type of ship that it was. So she knew that there was a, a huge explosive device, and she had to just push this button. Yeah, I, I thought about that too, but I mean, again, I don't know if the people there know ships like people know car models and they know you know what their sure. ones can do and what others can't although i thought that seismic charge was kind of specific to boba fett didn't he use them in the asteroid belt in empire strikes back mm -hmm. yeah and yeah so he, and in um and in clone and uh, attack of the clones yeah that's right yeah well it so blew, it, it blew the shit out of the sarlacc pit the mandalorian <laughs> ship is is the same kind of ship no it was a different it was a different type yeah. of ship yeah, that's what I thought too. Tamura is how you say his name, right? Tamura Morrison. Mm -hmm. He's great. He's fantastic in that role. Uh, Ming Na Wen, she's great too. Uh, I don't know. Jennifer Beals doesn't really do anything for me. I mean, she's you know got those long worm things from her head and big boobs, but that's cool. Um, 
so far all the guest actors have been good though and uh and i like the mayor's assistant too what's his name jeff the comedian david pasquese yeah 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 he's funny all right so uh i guess we'll keep watching it and we'll catch up with you guys uh a little later about that show Josh Warren, welcome to Radio Labyrinth. Welcome back to Radio Labyrinth. How have you been, man? What's happening? I've been pretty good uh, for the most part. For the most part? What, what's for the most part? Well, uh, we experienced a, uh, a death in our family, so. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It was, uh, it was pretty sad. But uh, with that being said, I'm, I'm just trying to do things to honor my mom as much as possible and lean into my art as she would. So I see uh, that you do a lot of drawing uh, on uh, you do a lot of drawing and you post it on Instagram. Josh's draw, Josh's draw, Josh, Josh's underscore drawings. <laughs> it was just a rip off of Simon from SML. Of course. I like to do drawings. So what are you drawing a lot these days? So you do, you do a lot of like pop culture stuff, but you also do like artsy stuff too, right? Well, I, I uh, <laughs> yeah, but, and then uh, it's mostly superheroes or Star uh-huh. Wars or uh, Illuminati symbology. <laughs> I see that you have a lot of Illuminati shit, which I love like, because <laughs> I know where you're coming from with that, all that the conspiracy stuff. And, and I just found a new channel on YouTube for the guys talking about the Atlanteans and how they, they uh, you know, colonized the world and had you know, blue hair or blue eyes and blonde hair. I'm like, yeah, this is what happened. Well, Fogler told me recently, he was like, uh, he was like the moon. Yeah. is actually a space shuttle and it's an egg and it cracked open. And that's what brought us the uh, Atlanteans and the lizard people. Now this is uh, so. actor Dan Fogler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, make sure you specify that so people can seek him out. <laughs> yeah. He's uh he's he's got a new comic book coming out, uh Moon Lake. Those Moon pretty, Lake? Yeah, he's been working with uh Heavy Metal magazine. Oh nice. There's lots of tits in it. Yeah. Or is yeah. heavy metal like PC now? It's still heavy metal. Like their their Instagram page is awesome. Now yeah. uh, I, I edited some uh like little cheap motion comics basically for dan mm-hmm. uh the heavy metal like put out on their instagram i was like yeah i used to watch that it's yeah bad. sequel wasn't very good but it was cool to get yeah, up at I, four I, in the morning when i was in high school, junior high and watch it on hbo before my mom went to work i'm uh, gonna see some cartoon tits <laughs> and the blue oyster cult orb really. yeah and here are a lot of sammy hagar and montrose so uh, are you doing any acting? And now season two of Righteous Gemstones has uh, started. There are three or four episodes in, and I know that you were in that that uh, you were you were pretty funny in in that second in that first season as as a motivational speaker or something. I forget the yeah, character. That I, I was uh, I, I I was basically filling in for Adam Devine's. Uh, so he's the youth pastor, you know. Yeah. And he had to step down because Satan was getting to him or whatever. Right. And uh, he was like, so this is your new leader. I was the manager of a GameStop. That's right. And, and I guess I'm still the youth pastor, but I, I don't know because I'm, I'm not in this season. So. <laughs> well, they didn't shoot, they didn't shoot in, in Atlanta this season, right? Well, that, we shot that in Wilmington. Oh, you did? Yeah. All, uh, all of his stuff is like all over Wellington. I'm, 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 uh, I'm in a thing called, uh, did I tell you guys about the, uh, the Jamestown project? No, what's the Jamestown project. So it's this crazy, uh, homage to the making of, <laughs> it gets complicated. Uh, the exorcist. Okay. Cause like okay. apparently a bunch of like weird paranormal stuff happened on the exorcist. Is this a movie or a series? This is a movie. It, okay. And I don't know when it's coming out. Like, it was supposed to come out, like, before the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, they're like, we're not going to release it until we can get it in front of a live theater audience. 
Okay. Perform it all in live theater. <laughs> but like they, <laughs> they want the theatrical release. And it's got Russell Crowe in it. I'm I, I play a character in it. It's it's like this homage to uh the exorcist. They're like, all right, it's time for you to do the the pigeon scene. I hardly ever actually read the scripts. Uh, I'm like, pigeon scene, what are you talking about? They were like, all right, well, follow us. So we're on this lot in Wilmington at Gemstones, at, or uh, not Gemstones, at whatever, Screen Gems. And mm-hmm. uh, like, Mollocks are everywhere because it's the Exorcist. And uh, I was like, oh, you guys have Mollock statues. They were like, excuse me? And I was like, Malik, that's that big owl that you got a statue of. I was like, you know, he's the patron saint of Hollywood. Because <laughs> uh, just research Malik and you'll know why. Well, Malik, uh, Malik is on top of the Adult Swim, um, the, the <laughs> Adult yeah, Swim yeah, building. Yeah, mid cool. The owl, Moloch the owl. That's what they worship at, uh, at uh, that place that Alex Jones infiltrated. Bohemian uh, Grove. Bohemian Grove. I broke into it. I'm an American. <laughs> I was the first person to sneak in and and get their mock ceremony where they 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 pretended to kill children and burn and burn them in effigy. Uh, you, you got all these Republicans dressing up like cross dressers and 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 doing improv shows. It's Satan. Yeah, over there is where they keep all the body bags in Madison, Georgia. So when they have a big bunch of dead people, that's where they're going to have them all and bury them there. That was my bad. Uh, that, was, that was a good Jesse. Well, that, that Madison shit's real. Uh, I know. Buddy. I saw the episode with Jesse, and they also had Oliver Stone's kid on that show for some reason. So but anyway, they flew yeah. live pigeons in my face on that movie. Oh, nice. Like live pigeons. Did they bite you or hit you with their beaks? No, I just got some like wind slaps and I was like, I was like, am I going to get stunt paid for this? And they were like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I even get bird food. And was like, should I be getting stunt paid for this? And they were like, you agreed to do it. <laughs> like, what do you do? How's the campaign coming along? Uh, it's good. We're, uh, we're down to, we've got three, uh, episodes edited that are getting scored currently with, uh, a gentleman by the name of Steve Locke Franks okay. from Atlanta music for film. Okay. Uh, so he's doing the original score for us. And then we've got the last two episodes that are being edited concurrently and then those are going to go off to get scored and then we should be sending it should be airing on the fantasy network the first five episodes uh sometime in february or march i'd assume you don't need that guard role fulfilled still do you (laughs) when uh well so the hopes are people go to the fantasy network they like it they watch it and then the people who subscribe to the fantasy network basically like up vote projects Uh uh-huh and the Fantasy Network is supposedly like champion crowdfunders for different shows of up to like $500,000 for their original programming. And that like, the cool thing is too, it's like, they don't own our show. Mm-hmm. We still own it. We can distribute it any which way from Sunday, but they're like a uh, streaming platform specifically for like independent fantasy show projects. A lot of dungeon, like everything's basically like this is about Dungeons and Dragons and role play in real life, <laughs> which is what our show is basically about too. But right, the hopes are it, it, it becomes popular on Fantasy Network, and then uh, and then uh, we get funding, and then we can shoot that scene with you in it, and actually <laughs> pay you to be in it. I, I would do it for free, maybe. <laughs> You have to get some pigeons flown in your face. Man. I'll do it. I'll do it. Pigeons, crows, whatever the fuck. So Ass put together a music video, Action Show Studios, put together a music video. Were you commissioned to do this or did you do it on your own uh, for a song called Come On, Come On by Nashville Pussy, who's an old school metal band uh, from the 90s, pretty much. Shane Morton called me. Okay. And uh, he was like, hey, man, I got this friend writer and uh, they're trying to do a music video, like really low budget, but they're 
basically going to try to string a bunch of peacemaker footage, cat videos and explosions together. And I was like, I got the right guy for you, <laughs> which he's referring to me. Right. And uh, he was like, he was like, you think you can do it? I was like, yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. This sounds nuts. <laughs> so I ended up calling Ryder and she tells me, she was like, yeah, I just want like, at some point in time, I want to be able to like fly up into the air and some music video and then just explode over the audience. And I was like, okay. Uh-huh. I was like, well, I consider myself a low budget Michael Bay. So, <laughs> and uh, she loved that. Like she reached out to James Gunn and was like, Hey, uh, can you send us footage for us to be able to make this music video? And he was like, why don't you guys just rip it from the trailer? And HBO says something. Oh, well. <laughs> I like that. So, like, we got James Gunn's permission. So now we're all like within two degrees of James Gunn, fellas. There you go. Uh, uh, we got James Gunn's permission to steal his footage and put it into a stolen cat video music video that's just explosions and fire constant <laughs> like every symbol i put like fire raising <laughs> up the sides of the uh of the screen it's good so, it's really really good yeah it's, it's i think it's the craziest thing i've ever edited it's a cool song too i like it yeah i love the music in uh in uh the uh, it, it's just called peacemaker i love the music in peacemaker when he was going through, when Peacemaker was going through those albums, I was like, Tim loves all those albums. I love all of them. The, the ones I know, there were a couple in there I didn't know. But, you know, I liked that music back in the 80s, unfortunately. But I'm not going to be, uh, you know, that was 35 years ago. I can live with it. <laughs> John Cena, like, nails it, too. Oh, hell yeah. And so you watched it? You're into it? Yeah. Uh, I've, uh, I've caught up. And uh, I, I think, like, it, it really turned my opinion around on John Cena. Mm-hmm. I hated him as a wrestler. Yeah, he was kind of a terrible. I mean, his Originally, his kid, you don't see me. And the <laughs> yeah. baseball, the Padres hat, and the, I mean, the jorts. He, he was like a giant Limp biscuit lead singer. Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what he was. He was that rap rock thing from the early 2000s. You don't see me. And he's wearing he Bobby is. Hill shorts. Yeah. Damn. Short <laughs> pants. Uh, Bobby. Oh, uh, uh, it's yeah. I didn't like him, but his character evolved, I guess. But he's good. He's like the Rock, and that he's he can be a draw. Um, yeah, and, he, and he's actually like good at acting. Whereas right. like some of those guys, it's like I came all the way down to the ring, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Just seems like they're reading off of a top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hogan can't act at all. <laughs> yeah, you remember Thunder in Paradise? Yeah, uh, no, I can't. I can't forget it. <laughs> it was like, it was like they were uh, the A team, him and Sting. Oh God! <laughs> and who also can't act? It was like <laughs> they were the A team, but they were on a boat, <laughs> like a speed, like a cigarette boat. <laughs> he was on the A team as a guest. He was, uh, <clears throat> he was friends with Mr. T, and they had served in Nam together. <laughs> Hulk Hogan and no hey brother you're the A team brother I need you brother uh yeah. short, brother I loved uh the A team though and so of course at that time I watched it but the only movie that Hulk the only character Hulk Hogan's ever done in a movie that was good was Thunderlips because he was playing Hulk Hogan yeah. or or uh the the one where he was the nanny from the future <laughs> You mean the nanny? Uh, oh, he's like a <laughs> RoboCop looking video box yeah. cover. Yeah. That's how he became the nanny. Was it called the Manny? I forget uh, what it's called. Shit. They but I, I remember there was a scene like, and he's basically playing himself in that. And they're like, he like does something. And uh, these guys are like, these bikers are like, hey man, what the hell? And Hulk's like, what are you going to do? You going to hit me? And they were like, no. We're gonna sue you. <laughs> it was like at that time in the '90s when everybody was suing everybody. Court shows were all the rage. Right, Suburban Commando. Yeah, uh, who's the main? Who's the main actor in that film? Isn't it? Uh... Yeah, Christopher Lloyd and yeah. Shelley Duvall. 
Yeah. Yeah, how the fuck do you get Christopher Lloyd in a movie with Hulk Hogan? I guess you just said get <laughs> some money. Do you want some well, money? This is probably sure. this is at the same time as Roger Rabbit. He yeah. was terrifying in Roger Rabbit. Oh yeah. There was a bunch of conspiracy videos about Christopher Lloyd and how all the characters in his movies are based on some sort of demon. And you can't find it anymore. This was from when YouTube didn't censor anything like that. Uh, but they have this, they still shouldn't. I know, but they had all this great video about Christopher Lloyd is associated with the occult. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's an actor, so I, I don't buy that. You know what I mean? And you're an actor, but you're not like a, a dumb actor. And I think most actors are dumb. Not to, I mean, I don't no, I mean, be dumb, but just not into all sorts of stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we were talking about Moloch earlier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he's predictive programming, like Back to the Future predicted 9 11 and all other sorts of crazy uh, shit. Yeah, the, uh, there's uh, the, the, the clearing in Terminator 2 with mm-hmm. a truck. <clears throat> right. It says 9 feet 11 inches on it. Tim. Now, you can't tell me that James Cameron isn't behind 9 11. <laughs> right. And Matt Groening, because there's no bathroom in the World Trade Center. <laughs> Do you have a bathroom in that thing? No, no, no. Just crab juice and cloth cover. <laughs> crab juice or Mountain Dew? Ew, crab, crab juice. <laughs> Mountain Dew or crab juice? Oh, jeez. I'll take a crab juice. All right, so the show is Peacemaker. The video is Come On, Come On. The band is Nashville Pussy. The production house is Action Show Studios, where you can, uh, you can, what, what can people get from Action Show Studios, Josh? Well, they can, uh, if, if, so I, I like to think of us as like a creative production company. So, like, you have like projects that you want to uh, put together uh, and fund. We can figure out ways to do it at an incredibly low rate, as well as like uh, if you're a business, but like, and you want to do training videos, HR videos, internal videos, commercials for the internet or television broadcast, uh, we can do all that. But we, uh, all, all the guys and gals that I work with, we all have comedy backgrounds. So we know how to make things like, you know, fun and mm-hmm. funny and quality. So, like, if you don't want to bore your employees <laughs> with your mundane, everyday, run-of-the-mill, uh, inspirational video, you can make one that's fun that they actually want to watch and learn from. It makes learning fun. <laughs> well, Josh, where can people find it? Uh, actionshowstudios.com and uh, all of our socials are ex- at Action Show Studios uh, except for Twitter where Action Show Studs because they couldn't uh, fit studios. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, and then uh, Nashville Pussy is uh, at Nashville underscore Pussy and they've been tweeting out that video left and right so hopefully yes. people can watch the video. And we'll share it and uh, and put the link in the show notes and everything. And of course, if you're watching it on YouTube, there'll be a link for you to click on. Josh, thank you for coming on. You got to come back on sooner and uh, let us know when the campaign is ready and we'll promote the hell out of it, dude. Yeah. Are you guys going to talk about Boba Fett tonight? We already did. Now, are you gotcha. watching that? You can jump in real quick. Uh, I mean, uh, I love it. I know that it's been getting a lot of backlash. A lot of people have been like, man, I'm really sick of this show or whatever. Yeah. And there's parts I do hate, which is the weird uh, hover. Uh, <laughs> I think Power everyone Rangers. Hated the, yeah. yeah, everyone hated the Power, the Vespa Power Space Rangers. <laughs> I didn't think of Power Rangers, but you just nailed it. So. It, was, uh, it, it, it takes a couple eyes to look at it. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Man, <laughs> I made myself look this way. <laughs> like, I don't know. I hate those guys. I hope they all get eaten by that rancor. Well, that rancor is dope. And uh, what is it? Uh, uh, the the giant Wookiee chrysanthemum or whatever yeah. his name is. Black <laughs> chrysanthemum. Yeah. Uh, so what, what's his deal? Didn't he like fight Obi-Wan Kenobi and survive or something? 
Yeah. In the com yeah, in the comics and he um have you seen the episode that dropped today? No, I haven't watched today's yet. Okay, he's he's in it and and uh he has a little yeah, he's he's doing in the comics, him and Boba Fett were partners, just yeah. like Han and Chewie. So I, I think oh, that's yeah. kind of that's kind of coming to fruition in, in this next episode. So I, I hope so, because like I was like when when that uh it was fat slug cuts we're like, oh, they're goofy. <laughs> I was like, man, that guy's gonna join the team. That's gonna be a lot cooler than those <laughs> cyberpunk Power Rangers. So yeah, and, and the pig people, the what are they called, the Gamorrean? <laughs> the Gamorreans. I'd like to yeah, be one I, of the one of the one of those ten guys that has to lug around two two huts. They're, a, like a, they're also like so like. Uh, yeah, they have a hover thing? Hmm? <laughs> they're so softly round. The yes, <laughs> like, they're like giant toddlers. Yeah, <laughs> I was hoping they would be Siamese. They were just yes. like fused together, but I think they're not. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, you're talking about the huts? Or the... Yeah. yeah, the huts. I was hoping they're just one glob with two heads. Yeah, that's that's the skin. And then it's like, what do you think, sister? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, my problem with the, my main problem with the show, and I have some, but I, I think it's nitpicking because overall, I. I like it to where I want to keep watching it. But my main problem is that those banthas, these things are woolly mammoths and they're riding <laughs> around in a desert in a planet that has two suns and no water. Uh, on top you, of that, you don't know their the anatomy. Slowest, they, they like, they're about as fast as a slug. Yeah. Like, why would you pick the slowest animal in the hottest desert to ride? Teach but, those dogs to the lizard dogs had a why don't you just get a speeder? Yeah. Why, yeah, you gotta, why do they just use those speeders like <laughs> I didn't like how they actually like uh humanize the sand people though. Right. Because uh you know, like we just knew the sand people to be <laughs> crazy barbaric savages. And now it's like, no, they're living beings too because we don't know what's under that weird bamboo mask of theirs you don't know do you yeah like I'm, i think they're probably hideous <laughs> do they show them in the comic books without their uh yeah there's there's two different uh iterations of them in the comics one is you know they're real like burned and disfigured and then the other they're they just have kind of like uh, maori tattoos on a normal face so there's not really a definitive uh, so they're like humanoids. Yeah, they're built <laughs> like throw up. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> like I, honestly, I think it's the, because dog. the planet. I mean, I'll geek out here, but because the planet used to be a ocean planet before it dried up, and they were original to the planet. I think it has to do with the lack of water. Now they changed their voice to that garbled mess if they were talking underwater you'd be able to hear them more normally oh i like how they're bringing in the pikes and spice yes. yeah because like spice was always the thing of like the the clone wars show and all those like, also from dune no that was oh, just dune? that was just him george lucas ripping off spice dune. as a commodity in space from dune in the first place i, I thought like spice was like a drug there like in star wars in the first episode when they showed it um like everybody's everybody's tooting and smoking spice you get all crazy going to those bah, 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 everybody hanging out with, what's his name bebo max rebo max, max rebo he's the only pianist on the entire fucking planet <laughs> <laughs> and you know he's playing with his feet right yeah <laughs> Blue elephant guy. They just hey, uh, they called up. Luke. You still have that Max Rebo thing laying around? Um, yeah, I have it in my closet. You can buy it. You know the name of the music that they play too, right? No, what is it? It's called Jizz Music. <laughs> yeah, that's Lucas. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> Canon Jizz. J i z z. J i z z. Hey, let's all go get jizzed and uh. <laughs> let's just change one letter and it'll sound great. Nobody will ever think anything of it. Yeah, jizz, jizz is, is you know, jizz isn't jizz is just something that we talk about. You know, it's not not semen. It's just jizz. Jizz is like jazz, but jizzier. You know, because it's a jizz thing. Jizz. Show me your jizz hands. 
<laughs> Just rub an ice cube all over me. I'm all spiced up. I have I'm I have the death penalty on seven systems. I'll be careful. You'll be jacked off. <laughs> My friend doesn't like you. <laughs> I don't like you either. <laughs> Quiet down and trying to listen to jizz. <laughs> It's not the jizz you're looking for. <laughs> That's not the jizz we're looking for. Move along. <laughs> uh, I did not know that it was called jizz. I was uh, so I was watching Boba Fett with Julie, and uh, like we ended up watching it twice because, like, the first time she was like, "I don't think I really paid enough attention or gave the show any credit," because she she's not up like totally up to speed on everything Star Wars. She hasn't seen it 40,000 times like I have. I was basically like, you don't understand. People have been waiting 20 years for him to crawl out of that Sarlacc pit. <laughs> 40 years. Put me in the bank of bath. What's it called? The, the, the back to tank? Uh, back to tank. Put him in the back to tank. It's filled with back to teen. You know, if you just go buy Bactine and fill your tub and, you know, your arm gets cut off, you can just go lay in your tub and it'll grow back. I like the first two episodes. He's basically like just running around in his pajamas and the, <laughs> and the desert. Yeah. Dances with sand people. <laughs> yeah. uh, what if, he didn't find what the, the hot dances one. Dances with Tuscans? Is that what you said yeah, on the text? What, uh, what's that? On the text, you were like, dances with Tuscans? Yes, dances with Tuscans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had the, like, Blanca. <laughs> yeah, their their form performance with the, the big dance at the end was pretty moving. I'm surprised that they didn't make love to him. That, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he just wakes up from his lizard trance <laughs> and he's just every orifice is just a tuscan <laughs> that was that was so crazy too the like the the peyote lizard yeah let's put the peyote lizard in our nose and listen to jizz <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just pour sand all over me. Sorry. Did I just bring the show to the <laughs> Pour some sand on me. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm spiced, squeaky clean. <laughs> David Dubeck is the... Uh, Remember the dewbacks? Those are the lizard things that the storm people, yeah. the stormtroopers rode on Tatooine. Well, that's the thing that Mando, man, and uh, Mando learned how to ride one and conquer yeah. the goobacks. It's another another fucking thing on the planet. Yeah, we don't need a speeder. We have this giant slow um, salamander that we can ride around on. The Gila monster. Well, why don't they race the dewbacks versus the? Uh, what are the big things called? The Banthas. Bantha <laughs> I want money on the goobacks, dude. Yeah. Those goobacks move a lot faster than the Banthas, but maybe maybe the goobacks tire out soon. Yeah, probably. But they're not covered in woolly mammoth fur. <laughs> I thought they smelled bad. On the outside. On the outside. <laughs> it's Kenny G. <laughs> Smooth jizz. <laughs> Yeah, to win the number one station for smooth jizz. <laughs> Every radio station on Tatooine starts with a T. That has to be their call sign. So you're listening to T Jizz. <laughs> Tatooine's home of smooth jizz. And coming up next is the irregular guys for the next 18 hours this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew a name of it. The Dune C. Steve. <laughs> Take that south side. <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm a sand guy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, just on. Be at the strip club in Moss Isley. <laughs> like, all right. All right, dude. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Funny. Thank you very much for that. I miss you guys. And I, I love you all. I we love all you, man. And uh, con, uh, condolences on your family, man. And yes. uh, we've all been there. So, oh, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sorry to like damper the mood right off the bat. That's okay, man, because I'll be giving away all sorts of tickets. I'll be giving away tickets to see the Max Rebo Jizz Band this weekend at Moss Isley. Yeah, come on. It's Dune C. Steve. Now, this is very regional. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that he can talk to like give the uh, give the breaking points and everything else. Is- <laughs> <laughs> he plays he, he plays musical chairs with you, and if you don't make it, he hits you with that stick. <laughs> All right, Josh. Thanks a lot, man. Have a great night. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, peace. Uh, so uh, we don't really need to to delve into too much. Peacemaker is a great show. It's uh, a lot of fun. You have John Cena, who is, of course, Peacemaker. His father is played by Robert Patrick, who's a great actor. You know him from Terminator 2 and tons of other things. When he borrowed that box of ZD from Peacemaker. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. It'd be a big trouble. You're doing a good job, Davey. <laughs> is that Frank Sinatra Jr.? What do you think? There's a resemblance. <laughs> He plays Augie Smith, who is John Cena's father. But what a great cast. You got Danielle Brooks, who was, what was her name? Tasty on Orange is the New Black? Yeah. 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 Tasty. She's, uh, she is really good in it. I, I'm very surprised by her character because it's one of those, oh, we need to have one of these, one of these, and one of these. Well, we'll combine it all. And it's not like that. She's a good actress to begin with. And she is, she's funny. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, she's one of the better characters. Steve Agee is in it. He, he was in uh, something else recently. He was in the movie. They're all in the movie. Um, really, really good cast. You take after him, though, and dye your beard. Yeah. I love that scene where there's a funny scene where uh, we're not going to. We'll talk more about it. Well, how about we do like a, when it when the season's finished, we'll do like a recap and, and really dive into yeah, it. Maybe wrap up. Yeah. Um, the only character I don't like is Harcourt because it's hey, I'm kick ass chick, and it's you know, that's been done to death as every other trope has, but she's she's grown on me uh since the first episode. So, anyway, uh, I highly recommend it. I hope you guys enjoy that show. <laughs> Before we do our staff picks and, and stuff like that, I wanted to talk about the the final season of The Expanse. Um, I had a problem with it, but then I watched it again and, and I kind of get what happens and I understand what happens. I just wanted more because there's so much more and I want to read the books now. Have you any of you guys read the books? No, I read the first book, but but it's um, but yeah, it, it's so far from that was first season yeah. stuff. Um, the in, now the I'm ending does have that web series that they said was going to be connected with the ending of it, so it may fill in some gaps. Yeah, for you as if you, you got to watch was, it on your computer though. Yeah, Jeff, what were you going to say? You can't watch it on your TV. I'm glad they left it open for more, so maybe somebody could make more eventually. Yeah, and maybe they'll make movies or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I like the fact that uh, there's spoilers galore here, but I do like that uh, uh, that the son lived, Marco's uh, son, uh, Marco and Naomi's son lived, um, and then he, you know, he he got off the ship before you know Marco turned into uh, Fanta, and <laughs> that was some weird. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, what the fuck? He's turning into Fanta. Um, all in all, I thought it was amazing series i really got into it late but then i just you know consumed it quickly and uh i, I like the duarte character the the martian uh, the, Mar- the mars navy commander who who's on laconia yeah. there's a lot of lore there so i'm gonna gonna go back and, and just read the books and uh you know i'll go all the way through there's nine books i think or eight um yeah it's nine of them nine of them i'm gonna read them and uh you know, probably listen to them. Uh, but you know, I, I want to know what happens. That's such an interesting universe and I want to know who they're going to end up fighting. 
I tried to go ahead a little bit and get some spoilers, but I decided not to play that game. So anyway, uh, that's the end of uh, The Expanse, and hopefully that'll leave it open for movies. Kind of like that Battlestar Galactica. Um, now they're doing a series and a movie, and you don't know if they're going to be tied in together, and uh, they won't be at all tied into the the uh, Ronald Moore universe that was created in the 2000s. It won't be. They'll probably be more like the original series. Don't you think, Jeff? I hope so. You know, where they, they actually have aliens in their universe and the Cylons aren't necessarily, I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't, but I'll probably watch it because I like Battlestar Galactica. Um, uh, Justified is coming back with Rayland in, in Miami, which is where he started out, right? And then before he went back to Kentucky or yeah, yeah. Kentucky, uh, he's going back to Miami and the series will be set there. So it's kind of a reverse Dexter. Um. Daniel Radcliffe is playing Weird Al in a new biopic. I don't understand it, but I love it. Was Aaron Paul busy? Why did you say Aaron Paul? Because he played at Weird Al and that Weird Al behind the music where Patton Oswald was Dr. Demento. Oh, that's right. I'm the weird one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think that's cool. I think that's cool. I thought, uh, it, was, I thought it was cool. He said that uh, he told all his fans that when he made his first movie, um uhf that like clockwork every 33 years he was going to be putting out a new movie and he, and by god he's standing behind <laughs> it <laughs> i love uhf a lot of people don't like it but i i think it's a oh, fun it's hilarious movie. especially when you go get high in a construction site and then bring whippets into the theater with you. <laughs> and then king of the hill in addition to uh, mike judge bringing uh, beavis and butthead back with a movie and a series uh, King of the Hills making a comeback, and I didn't. Greg Daniels too, the original. Yeah, so that'll be cool. I hope that. Uh, well, they're not going to change the character as much. I don't believe, right? I was kind of hoping they'd age him up. I mean, get one way to get around Luann, you know? Yeah, because they, they could ease, more easily write her out, and then <clears throat> you know, just seeing uh, Hank deal mm -hmm. with you know everything that's a little more current would be hilarious. Well, we'll see. That's the way it is. Um, can't wait, though. I love Beavis and Butthead, and I love uh, King of the Hill. I can't wait to watch more episodes of King of the Hill. Our uh, staff picks, mine real quick. Uh, Sally Struthers uh, was on Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast two episodes because they talked for so long um she's no holds barred now i'm going to go listen to her on on wtf with mark Marin because she just she doesn't pull punches and she's interesting and funny and uh she does impressions and she tells a great story about being the she and another actress were in the first uh female version of the odd couple on broadway she she wouldn't say who the first actress was that she worked with because she hated her and she would she was, I won't even give her name. I won't even put her name out there in the universe. And she just said this woman was a total bitch. So as soon as I got to work, I looked up who it was. It was Rita Moreno. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, and I was like, okay, makes sense, makes sense. But she ended up doing, and I think a bunch more episodes with Brenda Vaccaro. Uh, anyway, uh, but beside that, she was really good friends with Ruth Gordon. And I, like I said, I love Ruth Gordon. So anyway, that's my staff pick. Mine's a podcast, too, uh, Fly on the Wall podcast. Mm -hmm. That Dane, Dane and Carvey, David Spade podcast about SNL. Mm -hmm. Tina Fey is on this week's. It's really right. good. That's next in my queue after I finish Operator, <laughs> which I like. Good yeah, recommendation. Too. I remember those days. I never did it, though. <laughs> my staff pick is a new show on Netflix called Archive 81. Uh-huh. Um, I keep seeing previews for it. Is it good? Yeah, it's. I'm. I'm about uh, four episodes in. If Midnight Mass was kind of based on Salem's Lot ideas, this is based on. I would say Rosemary's Baby. Ooh. Um, it's kind of cultish. A videographer who has who gets paid to go put all this video footage together and find out what happened in this damaged video footage. But in doing so, he like. He sees, you know, people he knows in it, and it's from 20 years ago. It's real kind of um, jumps back and forth in time, and he doesn't realize how much his, he's tied into it personally. Um, but it's really cool, uh, real creepy. 
Um, and it, it's a kind of a, the first two episodes are kind of a slower burn, but it really picks up uh, in the third episode. Um, but yeah, Archive 81 on Netflix. Awesome. Views, views, views. Or, 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 or. I can snooze. Snooze. Yeah, number one, views or snooze, Growing Belushi comes back tonight as we record this. That's I'm that check show about Jim yeah. Belushi and his pot farm. I watched the first season. I'll watch it here and there. I mean, it's not something I got to sit and watch every week, but I'll watch it. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, I'll give it a views. I saw him in the preview. He said he was. He said the only thing he's got to worry about now is ground squirrels and and gophers. <laughs> so that's his main problem. Everything <laughs> else is gravy. I wish we could get him on. Yeah, yeah. keep trying. Yeah. Um, number two, Fraggle Rock reboot. Back to Fraggle Rock comes back on HBO Max. That's a snooze you're, for me. You're not going to let Gil views that. Well, no, he won't care about it now. It's it's still all hints and done, right? Yeah. I'll use it. I, I want to see what happens. I liked the original Fraggle Rock. I like the original Fra- Fraggle Rock, too. Um, I don't know if I'm going to watch it now. I'm going to give it a shot. I love old the old man. man. The dead. old man was, yeah, he was the he was like yeah. the best part. One that played the, the uh, bartender in Boondock Saints with the mm-hmm. stuttering problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And number three, this is a weird show that I, I was bored the other day and I was flipping around looking for something to watch. And it just started on Peacock uh-huh. called Wolf Like Me with Josh Gad. I like Josh Gad. Oh, it's got yeah. Isla um Yeah, Isla Fisher. Fisher, yeah. Yeah. This looks this looks pretty interesting. Um I'll give it a views because it I saw the preview for it. It looked good. What's it about? Yeah. Real quick. I, I think maybe Isla Fisher is Isla Fisher is a werewolf. Okay. But I don't know. They don't say in the first episode that it kind of ends on a, a cliffhanger where she has to rush home before like the moon comes out or whatever. It seems like, you know, like Josh Gad's a single father who, you know, just lost his wife and he's trying to, you know, raise his kid. And I think yeah. you know, they kind of worlds clad. Yeah. He like, she, she like gets into a car accident with him in the first episode and that's mm-hmm. how they meet. Mm-hmm. And so she's like attracted to him. And so she like goes, decides to go out with them. And it, it turns out like she hasn't been out in like 11 years or something on, on a date or whatever. And it's just, it's everything sets up to her being like weird, really weird. Mm-hmm. And he's like, just kind of rolling with it. It, 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 it seems like it's going to be a fun show. Just from the first episode, I enjoyed it. Cool. Views. It's a views for me. I'm going to keep watching it. I'm going to views it. Yeah, views for me. All right, everybody. Listen, you can subscribe to Radio Labyrinth on Facebook now. Go to our Facebook page at Radio Labyrinth and uh, select podcast from the top bar and subscribe. That way you can uh, mobile Facebook right now. And uh, maybe later in the spring, it'll be on desktop, but you can listen to it through Facebook if you're not listening to it other places. If you are a subscriber uh, to uh, wherever, you know, on whatever podcast app you use, please go to YouTube and subscribe. That's um, even if you're not going to watch it, just go there, subscribe, like the videos if you give a chance and and check it out. Dustin puts a lot of work into the videos. They look really cool. They look professional and uh, it's, it's, it's fun to watch and views. You should views radio labyrinth podcast. You can follow us on social media. All those Links and everything are in the show notes and on your screen or right below. So you can check all that out. If you'd like to become a Patreon member, go to patreon.com slash Tim Andrews. And there's a bunch of different levels. If you come in at the producer level, uh, after you've been active for a couple months, we'll send you a t-shirt and you can pick from anything you like in our store. So uh, guys, thank you. And uh, once again, don't forget this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, which will be the 26th. You can uh, access our Radio Labyrinth Presents episode with Broen Lawler. Did I say it right that time? Yep. All right. That's Dustin's brother, but also the lead guitarist of St. Paul and the Broken Bones and an artist, and we had a lot of fun talking to him. That'll be uh, our first of hopefully many conversations with him. So until next time, please remember to keep it canon. Canon is canon.